So, hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Juliet, and this is Colorful Threads Embroidery. And so, a little history about me. I've been doing embroidery for 21 years. I am a Melco certified technician and instructor. And my goal is to bring things to you live in a little bit more real uh, setting. Um, the Melcos that, the Melcos, the videos that are put out by Melco are done very good. They're very technical, full of lots of information, but I'm here to give you real world situations and how to actually set up designs for things. Um, yeah, and just kind of hang out and have a good time and do some embroidering. So welcome to the channel. First of all, first thing I want you to do is give me a subscribe if you haven't done so already. Give a thumbs up to the channel if you like what you see. And leave a message in the comments of anything that you want me to cover in a future video. So, um, with uh, all of that done, we're going to get started with today's content. Alright, so those hoops look like this. They are curved to go on my hat driver, and they look strange, and they go into the software and look strange as well, but that's fine. The curve is intentional so that you can get small items better on your machine, which is another one of the awesome things about our machine, is that it has the smallest bobbin casing hook area to do small items the best. So, alright, these are all the things that we're going to cover today. So. Stick around. Alright, we're going to start with my overhead camera. Okay. These guys. So to use these guys, we need our hat driver installed, so we're going to switch back over to the tripod and get our machine set up for that. driver on the first thing that I have to do is take this little black cover off now mine broke and I haven't replaced it yet just because I have to go out to the truck and get another one um, but if you have your little black hook guard cover on you want to remove that and it's either going to have one screw on the bottom the new style to loosen that and pull it straight out of the dovetail or you have the older style which has two screws that go in at an angle and you got to loosen those in order to pull that one straight out. Once we have this dovetail in the front exposed, I'm looking up there. Um, once we have this dovetail in the front exposed, that's what we're going to use to put our driver. Okay. So my box with all my First thing I'm going to put on is my stabilizer bar, and I haven't done this in a while, so I'm going to make sure everything is nice and oiled up before I get started today. Yes, I have it. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that these screws are level, because the clearance for this bar going in, you don't want to hit your hook and damage it or scratch it. So these are all level. Go into my dovetail all the way in to the back of the machine and tighten. Now, I'm going to take a cloth and clean any lint and debris off my bar. I don't want anything to get inside my ball bearings. Driver. 
so it has been a little while since I've done um, hats on my machine so I'm going to just kind of clean inside here a little bit get some dust and lint out around clean the back side I can tell that I oiled it up very good so basically what I'm wiping off is some extra oil that's gone out so if the oil has come out that means it's no longer inside so I gotta put some fresh oil inside Okay, so, oh, whoa, look, dirty. Okay, I'm gonna get my oil bottle. And inside this driver, so the driver I have has a um, sealed ball bearing bushing on the front and on the back. And each one has four channels of bearings, and I want to make sure I get oil in each one of those channels, front and back. If you have the um, hat driver that has the brass bushing on the inside, then you want to coat the inside edge of that whole bushing, front and back, because it doesn't have the benefits of the ball bearings. However, you can upgrade to the piece with the ball bearings, and I'll try to drop a link to that underneath um, later. And I'm just going around and I'm looking at those balls, uh, just putting a drop of oil in each one of those. Okay, flip this guy over. And one, two, three, and four. Perfect. All right, now I know everything is oiled up properly. Ready to install. Lining up my centerpiece. On the machine and it slides nice. I can see oil on the bar, which means I've got oil in there. Great. Back to the back. Go to my single hole on the inside. And then we go around and find that hole. And come to the side and get the same. Again, we're just tightening it so it doesn't vibrate loose. So quarter to an eighth of a turn. If you break these guys, I'll put a link to these as well on the website so that you can um, reorder them if you break them off. Okay, we have our driver on. And I think for the hooping of this, I may out my chair. Okay, put my hat. Oops. My box. Maybe I the camera to the other side. And sort of. Like that, yeah, okay. Let's see about the chair. Okay. Um. All right. So we have the um, hat driver installed. So this uh, hoop goes on just like you would your um, regular hat hoop that has the opening on either side so that you can line up that key. We're gonna line up our key and the locks will lock right down on it. Press firmly and get it in there. Perfect. All right, this one has a slip latch. Ah, oh, cool breeze, thank you. Okay, this is how the hip goes on. So again, anything that pops up like this is danger and it needs to stay closed all the time except for when you are actively hooping something. So let's get the software set up so that it knows what hoop we have on the machine.
Okay. So now then, we need to change our hoop. We are in the um, advanced interface still. And what that looks like is when we go to the hoop selection screen, we're going to click on our driver. In my case, it's the red driver. If you have a graphite driver, it's just going to be a gray color. And then we're going to be selecting the extra large cap back. And it has the part number here. I'll try to also put the link in the comments below. Um, I love this hoop. So we're going to select this hoop and do our little check mark. And this is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on the machine. The wider part is towards the back of the machine. The narrower part is towards the front of the machine. Wider part is back here. Narrower part is out here. That's in case you're paying attention. So if I put this hat back on like this, yeah, I ripped this one, like this, and I sew the name I have now, it's going to say Juliet and it's going to be upside down. So everything's going to be kind of backwards. So what we're going to do is go back to the screen. So when you're using this and you're hooping, your uh, name is going to be upside down. Oh, let me show you what this looks like in the other software first. Okay. Go back to the other software. So here we are in the advanced software, version 10 and below, what that looks like. Here it is, red hoop tech, extra large, cap back, boom, right there. In here, to flip the design upside down, it's going to be two little clicks at the F. We'll go back to the other interface. just be at 180. We're going to take it back to the upside down version. But you would just, if you need to flip it, come in and do a quick 180. Okay, so we have our name, we have it in the hoop. So we're going to bring, because we have our hat driver installed, the hat driver is installed, we need to bring our speed down um, at most a thousand but I really like to start at around 750 800 just for the first run I've never sewn on this hat before so maybe we could do 800 since there's no structure under it but you want to make sure that you address your speed because we are using the hat driver and the driver really doesn't like to, um, let's switch to the other camera. So this driver turns like this. So it's another step the machine has to do. And it just doesn't move well when you try to go faster than a thousand. So max speed is a thousand. But I always try to start at like 750, 800. See how it stitches first and then speed up from there. Once I get to a speed that's running well without a lot of thread breaks or needle breaks, then I know I've found the speed for that particular hat or that particular thing that I'm sewing on. So, all right, let's get this hat hooped in here now. I have a piece of hat back in here, which is a normal 19 inch piece. Don't necessarily need a piece that long since our hoop is only this wide. We really only need a piece that's about eight inches. So this is where buying those pre-cut pieces um, comes into play, that, that are the short ones. They're made for this hoop, or your pocket hoop, or just a conventional cap frame, which only hoops the front of the hat. It's kind of sort of like this, only a little bit longer. Um,
specific. All right. And we have our hat back. So, um, this is normally tucked in, and Velcro is normally inside there like this, but this hat ripped. So, no big deal. Um, I can always stitch that back together later. But it has a curve to it. We're going to take our backing and stick it in there. But what we're trying to hoop is like right here. So I'm going to open this hoop. I'm on the right camera. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to go in with my backing, in with my hat. It's kind of weird, but that's okay. I'm going to get the backing all the way in. And then once I have the backing in, there are little tabs back here that I can kind of slide the back in under to hold it so that I can manipulate the hat. Can you see that? Let's see if you can see that. It has little tabs here to hold the back in. You just can't go too deep in these tabs with the backing that I have because I think mine is only the four. So, because you want to make sure the backing is still under this side over here. Mm, da, 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 like that, there. So I stick this backing all the way in this hoop. Comes out of, this is no good, this isn't going to help us. So, we're only going to slide this backing in deep enough to hold it. Just so it's hands free. backing is in. You can stick the hat on. Maybe that way it's easier for you. Just seems like now I have to actually kind of wiggle it in. There we go. Now, there's not a lot of markings on this. Ooh, I got caught. Let's close that. Alright. So there's not a lot of markings on this hoop, which is fine. There's a few. There's like three markings in the front. There's three markings in the back. And then there's like an angle. Pick something to line everything up with, um, and that's going to depend on how long this is here. Maybe put a piece of masking tape on here and put a mark if that works for you. I, I, I like using masking tape so I can remove the marks and not have all these permanent marks all over my hoop then. Um, so find what you need, where you need to line it up. The center mark though is what I'm going to be lining up the seam of the hat with. And there's another measurement that I'm going to be looking for as well. Let me find... a really long one. Alright, that's that's fine. We will come up with a measuring device. This will work. Okay. So, ruler, um, just so that you can get consistent uh, hooping and placement whenever you're hooping. So, you have a place to mark here, and there's some places that you can mark back here. However, how far is it from here to here, right? Sometimes that changes. Maybe you need to know that. So get all my lines lined up. I just have a piece of cardboard that we're going to call our measuring device. It's going to go from the outside edge here to the inside edge of my hat. Pull it out just a little bit. Measure it in. And you see how technical I'm being? It's my Universal Orlando Annual Passholder Pen. Alright. My line here is straight. If you can see that. You can't quite see that. That's okay. We got this on here. Now I'm going to flip my lock to hold it tight. And from here, 
just going to set up my name, trace it, and sew it. Let's see where, how it looks where it's at right now. Just going to do a simple trace. changes what points I'm measuring and looking at up here when I'm trying to line this up. So, inside and from the inside edge to the outside edge of the hat, good, it's in a lot deeper. Now I'm in a safe spot. I'm going to look here and make sure that I'm lined up in the front because I'm lining up that seam. And it looks like my hat now lines up with the two teeth that are on the inside here. Another thing to see when I'm lining up multiple hats, if I was doing a logo, that would give me points. I'm looking here lined up, I'm here I'm lined up, and then I'm going to measure just to make sure, and that goes all the way to the edge. So this is going to be perfect. I'm shifted another half an inch now. So I'm going to move my logo back down, which is my name today. Trace. I did not hit it. And I might get down just a little bit more. Yeah. That goes as low as I want. 
that's lined up it's between the two little like decorative spots on the hat and it is orientated correctly good I think we're ready to sew ah presser foot height so something we haven't talked about is your presser foot height and what's going on here so um, my presser foot wheel you know is on the left hand side over here and being that I'm on needle number 15 you can see this Here, here. So counterclockwise lowers the presser foot and I'm all the way down now. Clockwise goes up. And I'm probably going to go up maybe four because it's kind of just some denim here. Okay. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So let's go ahead and sew. Ready? Oh, before we do a hat, I need to check my bobbin. I don't know where I checked my bobbin last. It went falling across the floor. My bobbins are not magnetic, so they're gonna go rolling. And correctly, we have good tension, and we're in. We have plenty to do this job. And put our in. Okay. So I'm just going to go behind and flip my little latch and pull it out slow and easy so I don't rip anything. And I have my name. Fuck my hat. It's pretty big, but that's fine. We have plenty of sewing room in this hoop. That's why I love it so much. It gives you so much space so you can put a big logo on the back. My tail way back in and we're done. Looks very nice. Now I gotta fix my hat so I can actually sew it. I ripped it in another video. This actually just goes in and stitches. Just got put on the sewing machine. Alright, so we're gonna use this hat again. Because now what we're gonna do away. Okay. Now take this driver off.
still have your box. You want to put everything away. You're not doing hoops on the regular. You want to have everything stored in your box and put away so you don't have any damage to anything or um, losing of anything. So, back and I'm going to actually leave my training bag. Move my hoops out of the way. Some extra oil down in there. That's good news. That means I've been oiling everything correctly. However, I'm going to have a tissue. Dention marks and everything in my box from it being all put in there all the time. This piece in. I have my gauge that sits in here, and then I have my hat hoops. They just go down in the box. So then everything that I need to do hats is safely stored in my machine, just like this. If you have any questions, if there's anything that you need to know. Send me a comment, and I'll put it in the next video. So, um, I think today I've covered everything that I wanted to cover, which was all of these strange and bizarre hoops, and hooping different odd things. If there's something odd that you have that's coming up in your list of things to do, or something you're wanting to offer to clients, put a comment in. Let me know what it is, and I'll show you how to get it hooped in on the machine using whatever hoops I have available. So until I see you in two weeks, have a fabulous and wonderful day, have a great and prosperous two weeks, and I'll see you back here again soon. Bye for now.